What's up guys and gals and welcome to another sunny review and today we're taking a look at Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayan. I actually had the opportunity to meet these fine folk over at a gaming expo where I'm from and I got to play this one hands on so special thanks to the developers for the review key but without further ado let's get started on this review. Sydney Hunter is an 8-bit action platformer with a complete retro vibe down from its music to its visuals. It's a throwback to some of the old school platforming games like a Mario, Metroid, or Mega Man. And the story here is that Sydney, the geologist, is out exploring and adventuring when he comes across a Mayan pyramid he finds strange but interesting. He walks in and he's trapped. He soon quickly finds out that this is not an ordinary pyramid as the two Mayan gods, the sun and the serpent god, break the Maya Hab calendar into pieces and have taken the idols. And now the only way to get out is to retrieve all these missing pieces and restore the calendar and idols. True to its old school nature, this game features very heavy platforming and action combat. The combat itself has you using this neat whip that attacks your foes from a distance. Later on you're able to find more weapons like a spear to throw from even further but with an added delay between throws as to not overtake your whip as the main weapon. The game controls are relatively simple here as you just have a button to attack, jump, and cycle through to drink a potion to restore health or throw bombs if you find those items. The controls are simple and well done, but there is a bug that I hope that gets patched that at times has you drinking your potions or throwing your bombs when you use your attack button. Note that this was my only bug that I found through my playthrough. The game does feature three hearts for your health with the ability to collect gems throughout the levels that help you purchase more health from shopkeepers. Dying in this game from enemies honestly is probably something that will happen from time to time but the biggest difficulty that comes is from the platforming itself. The game features quite a few big stages with multiple rooms in each and you'll be traversing through a lot of obstacles and enemies through each stage. The way to unlock these stages is by finding these secret crystal skulls that are hidden throughout the levels and this is going to be key as you'll always have to be on the lookout for these as you can't progress without these skulls. Now these can be hidden through walls or big platforming obstacles obstacles but this is where I mentioned my first gripe with the game the levels themselves are designed cleverly with the traps and the timing with the jumps and obstacles being very key to your survival and while the enemies will chip at your health falling from a bad jump always leads to your death which is where I think the majority of your deaths are going to come from in this game but the game essentially features a risk versus reward scenario due to how the save points are placed throughout the levels keep in mind that you'll be dying a ton in this game as this is easily one of the most difficult games I've ever reviewed. You will be chasing after these crystal skulls that can be placed in dangerous areas but completely far away from a save point and essentially you dying can reverse 5 minutes of gameplay. Now you don't have to chase after every skull especially in the more dangerous areas but you have to keep in mind that the only way to unlock new levels is by finding as many of these skulls as you can. Once you've explored a stage and you get to the end you'll be going up against a boss and this was probably one of my favorite parts of the game. They were fun to challenge and I I saw myself dying quite a bit, but learning the patterns and how to attack them was fun. They had all sorts of abilities and at times they could be thrown at random, forcing you to kind of react but at the same time you could learn the mechanics and eventually come out on top. Save points were also generally close by so I didn't mind dying and coming back to eventually win out against the boss. But to segue into the mechanics at play here, I think the game unfortunately left me a little bit more frustrated than I would care to admit. I think my biggest gripe with the game more than anything was how they handled the save points. I think I remember talking to one of the developers and they mentioned to me that they didn't want to make it too frustrating and wanted to make sure that you could save your playthrough at good points but I don't think this ended up happening especially as I progressed further into the game. When you really start to feel you need to collect those skulls or you know you can't progress to the next level you start to have to go out of your way instead of casually playing and exploring at your own pace. You start taking more risk which then leads to more deaths which then gives you a lot more frustration which then in turn makes you not want to play the game. I ended up stopping giving up for a while when I hit a level that I think had no save points as I think that's how the level was intended to be or maybe I just couldn't find a save point and I went 13 minutes in being so careful and intricate only to end up dying and having to restart 10 to 13 minutes of gameplay after collecting all those skulls and gems and making so much progress only to have to restart was a huge bummer. 
keep in mind you can replay a level to collect the skulls you missed but for me this was a lot more tedious than fun and that is going to be your key with sydney hunter and the curse of the mine is playing the game with a big sense of patience not just because you can die so easily from the traps and platforming but because the game requires you to do so as the level designs are meant to take your time and study the traps because if you don't you'll end up seeing a ton of deaths but visually speaking i tend to like a lot of retro style games but this one wasn't my favorite but i don't think it was that bad either there's some great areas with tons of color and detail but some others that weren't very impressive overall for me there's not much to say here and i can see this turning off some people if you're not into that retro vibe but one area that i wasn't a fan of was actually the music it was a bit repetitive and in some cases sounded a bit bland and kind of did nothing for me outside of the boss battles where it definitely ramped up and felt more suspenseful the game 100 percent runs well and i had no problems here as well as the little time that i did get to play it on handheld everything in this aspect completely ran smooth so i'm happy to report that overall with sydney hunter i think we have a pretty niche game it's a throwback to the old school platforming days and i think you have to be a pretty big fan of those to really enjoy your time here i honestly had a hard time rating this one as i feel this game wasn't intended for how i like to play a platformer but for those who want a more hardcore throwback retro style experience a lot of levels are well designed and full of hard obstacles cool enemies and the bosses were a lot of fun but the way they handled the save points drove me a little bit nuts i wasn't a fan of the music but the controls were good and the game ran really well my final score is going to be a solid 6.5 out of 10 there's a lot of hours of gameplay to be had here a lot of deaths as well but a lot of satisfying victories when you finally overcome an obstacle in the level design the game might be a tad bit overpriced and the final score reflects that i think if this were to be around the 10 to 15 dollar mark you'd have a lot more value here there's no replayability from what i can tell but you're getting a lot of stages and levels so there's a lot of adventuring to be had here thanks again over to the kind folks at collector vision games it was nice meeting them and thank you all for watching the review if you guys can hit that like button as it helps me out greatly and sub to the channel if you're brand new and you're looking for more new game reviews but with all that said i hope you all have a sunny day